everybody. The purpose of this video is to show you how to get a graphical visualization of any discrete valued probability distribution. So uh, this will work for any distribution that you can get into a t-table. Um, in this particular example I'm going to use the binomial distribution with 64 trials and a probability of 48.7 percent success on any one trial. Um, might seem kind of strange, but this ties in well with the quiz my students are doing in my Math 243 class. So we'll begin by constructing this distribution into a t-table. So over here in cell A1, I'm going to type x. That way I know that's where my discrete valued random variables are going to go. In this particular chance, in this particular case, x is going to stand for the number of guesses out of 64 that I get correct. So I can get none of them correct. That's the least number I can get correct. I might get one of them correct. And you can see right away this is going to get kind of tedious to keep typing in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 64. Uh, this is nice because Excel has a shortcut for this. And here's how you institute this copy shortcut. Left click on the first column, or excuse me, the first cell, 0. And while you're holding down that click, drag down and cover 2 and then let go. And what you've just done is selected the range of the pattern that you want Excel to copy, 0, 1, 2. Now you're going to tell Excel to continue that pattern. So move your cursor down to this little black square down here in the bottom. And you'll notice as you get close to that, the, the white plus sign that your cursor is changes to a little black skinny plus sign. Left click on that little square and hold it with your black plus sign and drag down. And you'll notice as you do that and you pull down, Excel is calculating that pattern. Little rectangle is telling you how far down it's going. Right now it's about 56. Oh, I'm going to slow down. Okay, 64. Boom. So there's 0 all the way down through 64 in column A. So you've got all the values of your random variable uh, placed for you right there in your first column. In column B, we're going to place the uh, probabilities of all of those random variable values. So I'm going to give myself a header p of x, probability of x. In this first cell, I want to place the probability of getting zero correct guesses out of 64. Now this should be pretty small because if I'm averaging 48.7 percent correct guesses, I shouldn't be getting zero. Hopefully this uh, will demonstrate in graphical form all these probabilities and why they make sense. So I'm going to click up here in the formula bar. Now we're going to let Excel calculate these probabilities for us. So we're going to type an equal sign. Whenever you use a function, you have to start it with an equal sign. And the command you want to use here is called binomdist. B-I-N-O-M-D-I-S-T. Excel likes that one. It comes up and says, I, I know that function. Left parentheses. Now the four parameters it requires are a little different than the ones in your TI. The first thing it asks for is number S. And what that is, is the random variable value. Now my random variable value is zero in this case, but I'm not going to type zero. I'm going to type A2, which is the cell location of zero. And you'll see why we do that in a second. I'm going to hit a comma. It wants to know how many trials. There are 64 of them. I'm going to hit a comma again. It wants to know what's the probability of success on a given trial. And that's 48.7%. Then you hit a comma, and then it asks you if you want this to be a cumulative probability or not. And by cumulative, uh, what it means is as you drag this formula down, it wants to know if you want to do an ogive or a percentile rank calculation. We don't want to do that. We want to just look at individual discrete probabilities. So we're going to put a zero for no. Close off that with right parentheses, press enter. All right. Three times 10 to the negative 19. Now that is very very close to zero. We would call that zero as a p-value. And it should be close to zero. There should be almost no chance that if we're averaging about 48 percent correct guesses out of 64, there should be almost no chance that we get none of them correct. Now, I want to do that same calculation for all the other 64 elements of my list. And this is why we made the random variable a relative reference by calling it A2. We're going to drag this formula down just like we dragged the pattern down over here in the probability of x column. We're going to drag it all the way down 
Minotaur next to the row with 64 in it. Oh, there it is right there. And let her go. And now in each of these cells is the probability of the random variable at left. And you can see, let's go back to the top here, you can see as you scroll down, the probabilities are getting higher. And that hopefully makes sense. They should be highest around 48.7% of 64. And you'll notice here we start now, we're actually losing scientific notation. Two and a thousand, four and a thousand, seven and a thousand. And when you get to 31, that's where your probabilities max out. There's about a 10% chance that you're going to get 31 out of 64 correct. And that's the closest discrete value to 48.7% of 64. That's also the, this is also the value you should have gotten for your average when you calculated the average of this distribution. And then they start falling back off again. There's the 33 we're going to be interested in, and so forth and so on. So now you have your t-table, which is fantastic. You've got your t-table. You can, you can view your entire distribution. And this is fantastic, except it's still a little hard to look at because, you know, we have to scroll through to see everything. You might not see patterns. If this were bimodal, it might escape you in this form. So as humans, we like to see things more visually. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a visual of this distribution by using either a line chart or a column chart. Okay, so to get our visualization of this distribution, we're going to start by selecting the distribution. So we're going to left click and hold in cell A1, then drag over to cell B1, and then drag all the way down until you've selected your entire distribution. All right, there we go. Perfect. I'm going to scroll back up to the top now. Okay, now that you've got your distribution selected, we're going to left click on the insert tab and we're going to come over here to line. You can use column or line. Uh, line gives you a nice smooth uh, curve uh, looking graph, so I'm going to go with that, but I encourage you to experiment with column if you want to. Left click on line, left click on 2D line. All right, now let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're creating. All right, now first thing you notice is you've got an x-axis and a y-axis. Um, Excel graphed both columns as functions of x. Um, so it's kind of strange. This blue line is actually x as a function of x. So it's graphing the point 0, com or 1, comma 0, 2, comma 1. It's strange. We don't want that. So I'm going to left click on that. When it's highlighted, press delete. Okay, that's gone. Beautiful. This is the graph that I want. Now technically, if all you're trying to get at this point is a look at the uh, at the distribution, you're you're done. You can see that it's bell shaped, therefore you know what outlier rules to use. But for those of you that want to go a little bit further, we can actually get a uh, a better look at the uh, graph by changing the labels, changing the titles, and and changing the uh, the axis uh, intervals. So we'll do that next. Okay, so these next bits will be just uh, kind of touch-ups, tweaks to make the graph look a little bit more uh, user-friendly. Uh, also, to make the graph more presentable if somebody needed to look at this graph and know what it was describing. Um, right now, if you look at the graph, it's kind of hard to know unless you're in the context of this problem, what you're, what you're looking at. So we'll start with uh, one thing I always do is get rid of these little legends over here. So I'm going to left-click on that legend and just press the delete button. Gone. That fills up the graph a little bit better. Um, next thing I want to do is I, I'm bothered by this x-axis going from 1 to 65 when it should go from 0 to 64. So to fix that, I'm going to right-click inside the plot area and go to left-click select data. Now your data source dialog pops up. And as you get more comfortable graphing in Excel, you'll get used to this box. But right now, I just want to mess with the horizontal axis labels. I'm going to edit those. And then it says axis label range. I'm going to actually, you can type this in, but I think it's easier to grab and, and select it. So I'm going to left click and hold in cell A2, and then pull all the way down. And you'll notice as you do this, the axis label dialog actually keeps track of where you're going. You're going to let go when you're done. Press OK, left click OK. Now you're Axis labels are updated. Left click OK again. 
to scroll back up. There we go. Now the axis labels are the correct, uh, correct values of the random variable. All right, so now I'm happy because my numbers on both axes represent what they're supposed to represent, the random variables for number of guesses and the probabilities of each of those random variables. Sweet. Now, um, again, at this point, you're, you're, you've are you're you been done for a while as far as just getting the shape, but let's touch the graph up even more. Let's put some access labels. Like, you, you know what they are, I know what they are, but a reader might not know what they're looking at. So if you go up to, to Layout under Chart Tools, and then you select Axis Titles, for your primary horizontal, right now there is none. But if you left click on Title Below Axis, you can now enter that title. And you can either type it in the box down here or in the function bar. I'll do it up there. And I'll type X equals number of correct guesses. There we go. And then press Enter. And now there he is down there. Now it's kind of small. So I'm going to go over to the Home tab. And I'm going to increase that font size, we'll say up to maybe 14. That sounds pretty good. And if you want, you can move this around to the right, to the left, put it off center a little bit. Up to you, really. Uh, these these numbers here are a little, again, hard to look at. There's a, quite a few of them. They're smushed together. Uh, you can you can edit them in a couple ways. One is to left click on the horizontal axis, and then increase the font size, say to 12 or to 14. And you'll notice as you shift from 12 to 14, the spacing changes. Excel auto adjusts that for the for the font size. Something else you can do if you want is you can right click on that axis and then go to format axis and you get quite a few options in here and I encourage you to explore those but the one that'll clean this up a little bit I think is the interval between the labels. If you go to specify interval unit right now it's at 1 and you can see that right down here. Uh, if you change that to say 4 and then press close now you're getting a a label every four units, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16. So a little bit easier to look at, a little bit easier to look at. Let's add a label to the vertical axis too. So back to layout, axis titles, primary vertical. You got some choices here. I like to use the horizontal one. You could use any one you want. I'm going to do a horizontal. And I'm just going to type this as probability. And then press enter. There he is. I think it's kind of small. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Slide it up a little bit. These probability values seem kind of small too. I'll make them match the uh, the vertical axis, make them 14, font size of 14. You can also, of course, bold them and italicize them if you want to. Again, totally up to you. The graph is looking pretty good. And last, last but not least, you can change the title. Right now the title is just the default Excel P of X. And I'll just put this as... Uh, probability, so I can spell this right, distribution of number of correct guesses made. And I'll put P equals 0.487 out of 64. Did I spell everything right? Looks like I did. So that's a pretty graph. Uh, hopefully you found this useful and uh, you can use it in one of your projects. Uh, thanks for stopping by.